What's up, guys? We're back for another episode. I don't even know if I would call this a series yet, but we're back on the Mustang. Um, waiting for it to cool off. Um, I'll let you know what we're getting on to, and then we'll get her done. So today we're just doing a simple oil change on my 2004 3.9 liter V6 Mustang. Nothing real crazy, but I just figured there's a gazillion tutorials out there and I feel, figured I'd make it a gazillion in one. So, let's get on to it. Uh, I have to wait for my car to cool down, but while it's cooling down, I'm gonna give you some background information. You know, maybe I can help you figure out what kind of oil you should use or if you really need to be changing your oil so soon. So, let's get on it. So, the oil I chose is this Valvoline uh, High Mileage 5 weight 20 synthetic blend and I just got a Fram filter. Um, I didn't, I'm not really too choosy when it comes to filters. I just try to make sure that they've got good mileage protection like right there, maybe. Um, synthetic oil, we got synthetic blend. It's good enough. Um, it's got a seal gap, whatever. And superior dirt holding cap capacity. Woo, that was a mouthful. But the reason I chose this oil is because I know I can trust this brand. And by that, I don't mean, oh, I love Valvoline, I use it every time. I actually, I usually use, um, oh, what is it? I'm going to forget now. Pennzoil. That's my preferred brand is Pennzoil. I usually get Pennzoil 5 weight 20. It's my lawnmower. Pennzoil 5 weight 20. Uh, synthetic blend, high mileage. Or just non-synthetic, full non-synthetic, either one. However, I chose this one because I went to Walmart. I wasn't able to get any from the parts store before I left for back home. And that's what, that's what I could find. So I have run full synthetic in my car before. However, it is an older car. It's got 186,000 on it. Um, it's from 04. And it has a lot of little itty bitty leaks. Little, probably little gasket problems maybe. My oil pan, my valve covers, whatever. So here's where your science lesson comes in. So a conventional motor oil, just non, no synthetic, the molecules in it are very big. They're big and they're not all the same shapes. So what that does is that kind of plugs up those little pinholes um, or your leaks, or they're too big to even get through. So you, you won't leak as much oil. It's probably not as good for your engine, but you won't leak. On the other side of the spectrum, you have something like a really, really fancy oil, like full synthetic royal purple. Royal Purple is amazing for new cars. It has tiny little molecules that are all the same size and they all slip by each other perfectly. So if I had a 2021 GT500, I'd run Royal Purple. However, I don't. I have an 04 V6 that's got oil leaks galore. And I don't have the money to fix them. So instead, I'm using a synthetic blend, which has a little bit of, a little bit of best of both worlds. It's got some bigger molecules from the, from the non-synthetic and it's got some smaller molecules from the regular synthetic, so it's not gonna leak as bad, but it will still have some of that synthetic properties where it's going to run a little better, it's going to flow a little nicer, because those molecules, a lot of those molecules are still the same shape. So, that being said, I also chose a high mileage because my vehicle is very high mileage. Um, and I got five weight 20 because that's what it's rated for. So, we can get into the five weight 20 meaning later, but right now, I'm gonna get into the filters. So this right here is my filter. It's a Fram, 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 Fram. I just realized my camera's backwards, so it looks like Marf <laughs> for you guys. But um, I got this because um, I knew what size it was because usually whenever you're getting oil, there's a little booklet that you can choose, that you can look through and find what you should be using. So I knew that my... Um, Pens oil, or no, my k and filter. It's not k and I can't remember what filter I usually use. The filter I usually use is a 36, is a, is it, it is XS, no, it's XL3600. That's what the brand is, or that's what the designation is. However, I couldn't find my brand that I usually use that I'm going to forget about. So I was like, hmm, maybe there's a book. And there was. So I looked through it, found this. Guess what? It is 3600. You can't read it because it's backwards but it is a 3600 and it's what fits mine. So if you have a 3.9 or a 3.804 Mustang, probably would work for 99 to 04 V6s. You should probably run 
try and at least, don't just put it in there. Check first, but I bet this would work for you guys. But that being said, a lot of companies now are doing, I believe this little QR code shows you what it fits. I'm not brave enough to try it yet, so I can try it later and let you guys know how it works. But that's, that's how I chose my oil and my filter. Um, so a lot of times people say you have to change your oil on the dot 3,000 miles. That's not necessarily true. And no, for you guys out there who are saying, oh, well, mechanics, they're just, they're just wanting us to come in every 3,000 so they can make more money. That's false. And it makes me upset when people say that. And I'm about to tell you why. So when, an, when a mechanic changes your oil, you know, he's going to put a little bit of this. Usually it comes from a big tank on a wall. Or, and they're going to put a filter that they get in bulk. The problem is, is that it is not going to make them hardly any money. In fact, most shops lose money on oil changes. They're not trying to get you in to change your oil to steal your money. That's dumb. They're going to lose money on your oil changes nine times out of ten. And before I get any people in the comments saying, oh, you're dumb, you don't know what you're talking about, I'm literally, I'm literally in classes to learn how to be a mechanic and to run my own shop. So you can go talk to my professor. I'm not going to tell you his name because that'd be rude. But, you know, if you got a problem with that, you got a problem with my professor. And if you got a problem with him, you got a problem with me. And I suggest you let that one marinate. That's a reference. So they're not trying to steal your money through frequent oil changes. They're really just trying to look out for you unless they're a really crappy shop. And we're not even going to talk about that. They're not real shops. Those aren't real shops. So, oh yeah. Also, you guys want to judge my wiring job? That's okay. It's crap and I haven't cleaned it up yet. So I got some cool underglow under here. So, yeah. So your frequency depends on the oil you choose and the filter you choose. I still try and keep mine within the 3,000 range, even though oftentimes I'm running 5,000 mile oil and 5,000 mile. Sometimes I even run 10,000 mile oil and 10,000 mile filters. I still haven't chosen my favorite. I err on the side of caution because this is my daily. I have to drive it to and from school every day and I drive home most weekends and that's a two and a half hour drive. I'm just trying to keep it up to date. I'm a little bit, I've gone a little bit over on this oil change. It's gonna be fine. Don't worry, I'm not gonna die, probably. So, that being said, if you're really worried about your car, you need to change it 3,000 miles, that's fine. However, just know that if you go to 3,001, you're not gonna die. And more than likely, most, most engine oils are all right with going five, sometimes, now don't, don't quote me on this, but five, sometimes even 10,000 miles. I wouldn't be that bold. That's pretty, that's pretty, uh, it's pretty ambitious, but it is possible. I'm also right in front of my light. So I wonder if my engine's cooled down. <laughs> Just kidding, I didn't burn myself, probably. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and jack my car up. I'll show you what points I use. Let's get her done. All right, so I usually have a little bit of a dilemma. My car is stock height, but it does have this little, this little guy I put on here. It's a little Mach 110 spoiler. What that does is that means that my jack, my floor jack can't fit under there quite as, e ooh. Ooh. can't fit under there quite as easily. So I'm left with a bit of a dilemma. Sometimes I put boards underneath my tires. Sometimes I don't, I forgot to do it this time. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to make it a little easier. Let's grab the old jack stand, or the floor jack, I should say. So here's a little pro tip for you guys. If you have neighbors who aren't very nice, and you have gravel driveway, go ahead and just roll this bad mamma jamma down the driveway at, at 6 a.m. I'm gonna tell you what, your neighbor's gonna have a lot of things to say to you. So like if maybe if you're lonely and you're just looking for a friend. So so here's what I'm doing. This right here is my, it's got a dent in it, holy crap. This is my subframe. Um, I want to get, full length subframes, but I don't have them right now. So I'm just gonna jack up one side, making sure to not hit my cat, which is right there. So we're just gonna lift that up. I'm gonna have to set you down for a second. Maybe, no, I'm just gonna be a man. Woo, this is difficult. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna release the jack. Nice and easy. So what I'm doing is making it easier to jack up from the front. I think I've got a clearance up there. I don't think I need to do both sides. I'm gonna take, take my old jack over here. 
and I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna cut to whenever it's in the air. So be right back. All right, so it's in the air. It's not on jack stands yet, but I wanted to show you. See right here, this is my K member, pretty strong. So I usually jack up from there. Um, Cause this lifts the whole front end without messing with any of my suspension bits. So I'll jack up from there. I'm gonna reposition my jack stands. There's one. All right, so you may notice that I put two here and that's for one reason. I am very nervous about that. Actually that one. And I usually double up anyway, just cause I'm pretty cautious about this kind of thing. I really don't want it dropping on my head. So where's double safe? All right, I got my other ones on the other side. I'm gonna let this jack down just ever so gently. One thing you don't want to do is yank it out of there because you're gonna you're gonna wish you hadn't. Maybe if I'm man enough. Let's see if I can be a man. Nope, I can't be a man. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I actually dropped it even a little more aggressively than I would have liked. Kind of scared me. So most people say, "Oh, you know, it's fine now." Wrong. Here's what you're gonna do. And this part might seem kind of dumb. This is very smart, actually. You're gonna take a car and you're gonna you're gonna just jerk it all around. You're gonna think, oh, what are you doing? You're gonna drop it. Well, I'd rather it drop on nobody than it drop right on my head and turn my head into one of those hydraulic press pumpkin videos. Yeah, the inside of my car is dirty, don't judge. So, got the car in the air. I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna take my car and I'm gonna Make sure my wheels are nice and tight. Make sure there's no up and down or side to side play. That's all right. Let's check the other side. I know you guys are probably missing seeing my beautiful face. See that? That's tight, up and down. Tight. Now, I do have a big old chunk taken out of my wheel. That's just from, we're just not gonna look at that. that that's from a, 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 oh, that's from a oopsie. So, now that that's there, we're gonna go ahead and move on. All right, engine is still whoo, pretty toasty, and I don't really feel like, you know, burning my hands off. You won't burn your hands off, that's better than exaggeration. But I remembered what kind of filter I used to use. That's one of these bad boys, STP. I still don't remember what I was saying earlier, but STP, it's an STP 3600, S3600. Um, this is just, this is 5,000 miles. I have gotten the more expensive one before, I don't think I kept the box though. I usually try and keep at least one of the boxes so that way I can remember. My memory is not that great. Where'd those shelves go? I don't remember that being gone. Um, so I got distracted. So I've checked my my wheels, make sure they're still tight. There's something on my air filter, but I'm not gonna think too hard about it. Um and check my overflow tank. Make sure it's good. Hold on. Overflow tank, we still got some coolant in there. Here's a fun fact that I want you guys to know. If you're ever dealing with coolant, here's what you need to do. You might think, oh, it looks, I feel the cap. The cap feels pretty cool. Well, you're gonna get hurt if you just yank it off there. So what you do is you come here, you squeeze that. You can't squeeze it pretty, pretty together easily. That, see, you're not looking for temperature there. You're looking for pressure. Because these things are pressurized, highly, highly pressurized. So if I were to just rip that cap off, it would still shoot hot coolant all over me and all over this, all over this garage, all over my car, all over my beautiful, not gross cover. Look at the dirt all over everything. And I don't want that because I don't like getting burned and I don't think anybody else does. So we're just going to wait a little bit longer. All right. So I was looking through the first parts of this video. So I realized you guys are looking at my nostril all the time. So. I'm not going to make you do that anymore. That's gross. I also don't know where I put my keys. So, I'm going to have to pop the trunk from inside the car. Yeah, don't judge. The car's pretty dirty. Oh, there it is. There's my key. Yeah, so I came home for Chris or for Thanksgiving break. I kind of usually bring home all my stuff. So, uh, I'm not going to let you see the inside of my trunk. <laughs> I can't even get my key in. There's so much dust. Hold on. All right. I got my tools show you what I'm going to be using today. So, I got my cobalt. I actually don't think I even need to do those clips. I got my wrenches. Yep. Well, looks like I'm getting out all of it. There we go. I think it's a 13. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a 13. No, it's a 14. 
Yeah, what the heck? I'll grab both. Okay, you're gonna need some wrenches. No, I left my oil filter, filter wrench over here. All right, you're gonna need one of these. It's an oil filter wrench. I'll show you how to use it. Um, there's my, there's my creeper out. So now, kids, this is the only kind of creeper you should ever use. One of these. I don't want to hear about you guys being creepers, and I don't want to hear about you guys having creepers. But if you have a creeper, let an adult. I'm, I'm not going to get into that. So that's pretty much the basic tools you need. It's not really that big of an of a deal. You don't need a whole lot of tools. You don't, you know, I don't need a say $6,400 tool chest to do an oil change. That's an inside joke from my state tech homies. But ain't she a beaut? I love this car so much. Anyway, back to the point. I think we're pretty much ready to start at it. Yeah, you guys want to judge my wiring job? Go ahead. That's pretty bad. Um, yeah, let's do it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and shimmy shake on under the old car. I know it's pretty oily, but it's all right. It serves its purpose to show that one. I really probably didn't need a creeper because it's pretty tight still under here. And. What size is this? 14, 13. Uh, uh. Did this thing already drip? That is, uh oh, is that red? You know what, I'm not, I hope that's not transmission fluid. All right, it looks like it's back out. Oh, I'm gonna grab a 15 and I'm gonna not use a crawler this time, or a creeper. Why is it a 16? Why is it not cool? My luck. My luck. My luck. Ooh, that's dusty. It's probably because my... I use my Mustang as a stinking rally car. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's gonna be one of those days, man. I'm telling you. It's gonna be one of those days. Probably should have stopped recording, but I didn't really feel like hitting the button. It's too much effort. And this is why I wore coveralls today. Anyway, I'd be underneath this nasty girl. So, let's see if this 15 fits, and if it doesn't, then I'm probably going to cry. It's pretty loose, but it'll do. All right, I think I'm going to, yeah, well, let's, let's get her done. That took a lot longer than I thought. So oil's drained, make sure you put it in a pan. I did not mention that. Put it in a pan, make sure it's more, make sure like mine's five quarts. I'm using like, like a, like a 16 quart pan. You don't, you don't have to go that extreme, but make sure you're not putting five quarts of oil in a five quarts thing. Probably won't work out well for you. Or it might, you know, might judge. But uh, that's that. Battle's only half over, so. Now we're going to get that oil filter off, but I don't think I'm going to put you on time-lapse because I feel like that was a really boring time-lapse. So, let's get after it. All right. So, I got my light here. I'm going to pull my pan because, yes, there is oil in your oil filter. I'm, not really, I'm really not going to go into the whole shebang about oil filters because there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, information out there on them. And there's a lot of specifics, I should say, my Sean Connery voice. But, you know, really, it shouldn't be too hard to get your filter off. That should be the easy part, actually. Because your filter shouldn't be on there super tight. Oh, I am leaking a little bit of coolant. How about that? Now, I gotta remember how to do this, though. Uh, hold on. Let's go this way. Is it this way? I think I put it on my paw. Oh. No, I'm going right way. I hope. Nope, I think I'm going the wrong way. Well, I'm going left. Okay. 
the daily must the daily struggles. This is why people. This is why it bugs me when people say being a mechanic's easy. I'll tell you one thing. It is most certainly not easy to remember my left and right. I'll tell you what. I wasn't a dumb kid in high school either. I was actually pretty smart. But even I have some trouble sometimes remembering which way is lefty and which way is loosey. I just said that, didn't I? Which way is lefty loosey and which way is righty tighty. Mm -hmm. And some people don't like the kind of filter wrench I'm using because, you know, it's kind of a pain in tight places, but I just kind of do whatever I want when it comes to choosing those kinds of things. Okay. Now, first off, this is a good idea to do what I'm doing, which is don't take your filter off all the way. Kind of, because there's a little, this feeds it, this feeds your oil system right here. This little dude right above your filter. So we're just gonna crack that, suck her open, let her, let her splash out a little bit. And while my neck continues, continues to uh, just absolutely crank right now. Okay, there will be oil in your filter, so watch out, because it's gonna splash if you're not careful. And it still might splash even if you are. I mean, I've been changing the oil on this car for two years now, and yes, I have spilled oil. Just like that. Okay. Should have grabbed some paper towels, but I didn't. So. This is not my garage either. This is my parents. And I'm currently in my mom's spot, so. If I don't upload any more videos, it's probably because she killed me. I'm kidding. Nobody please report my mother for abuse. She beat me for that. I'm kidding again. But you guys are going to have to sit there because I can't stop recording with my fingers right now. Ugh. Where's the paper towel? There we go. Chop towels. Ah, there we go. I'm back. All right, that wasn't too bad, was it? Huh? That wasn't too bad draining. So, let me make sure I mop up anything I spilled over there. Looks like I did spill some. Can't really see it. The angle on that. But, there you go. There's no more oil in there. Whatever you do, do not start your car until you put oil in it. It will not work under any circumstances. I don't care whose videos you've watched, it won't work. Okay? Trust me. So, I was going to stop and cut and do something like that, but I'm just going to make you guys sit here while I go get the new filter. just pop the crap out of my hip all right so here's the number one thing you have to make sure whenever you do this you need to make sure that your filter this little rubber ring you can take some of your old oil and you're just going to put some on there what this does is it lubes that up conditions it make sure that you're not going to make sure that you're not going to be just jamming her on there dry because what that would do is this little rubber ring here i just dripped oil all over my light hope it doesn't light on fire that thing's old what it does then make sure that you don't crack that ring. So if you just jam it on there at with all the gusto of the world, you're going you're going to crack it, or it's going to fold up on itself. And then not only will you be out an oil filter, you may you might just leak out so much oil that your that your car just decides to just not run. I've seen that happen. Actually, I did it on this one. No, I didn't. I did crack the O ring though. So I'm being dumb. And I decided to crank it down. So, there's another thing. You see what I did there? Did I use an oil filter? No, I did not. I used this right here. And I cranked it down pretty good and tight. Do not use a, use a wrench on this. You will most likely crack that little, that little rubber ring I showed you. You'll crack it. And then you'll have to do this all over again. And you'll be wasting a lot of new oil. Really ought to take this thing through the car wash. But I'm not. I probably should. Okay, so we're done down here. Let's move topside. That wasn't so bad. You know, some people balk or they're afraid of getting underneath the car, and I understand that. You know, it's not the it's not the most fun thing to do, and it's certainly not the most, you know, it, it, it certainly won't put your mind at ease. But if you know what you're doing, if you're careful, I like I did. I used two jack stands. You don't have to do that. You're not going to die if you don't. I used to, because it puts me at ease. Do what you have to do to 
put your mind at ease. If you don't feel comfortable at any part of this, take it to a professional, take it to a shop. I'm not saying that to make mechanics money, I'm saying that to make sure you're not gonna get hurt. Because that's my biggest concern here, guys. I'm not really worried about your pocketbooks. I'm not. I'm worried about you guys personally. So, look at my collars. It's bad. So, rule number one, be safe. You first, car second. You can replace a car. You can pay bills. You can't replace you. So, that being said, what I did there was very safe. It was controlled. I knew what I was doing. So, this is kind of an at-your-own-risk kind of thing. Be safe out there. So, next, we're going to move on to putting the new oil in. Oh, and I'm going to probably, you know, I may hear some of, ooh, yeah, let's not drop that little label in there. I just dropped that whole thing in there. So, you know, I hear a lot from, from older car guys or older enthusiasts. Look, you can even see my rocker. My rocker's in there. Isn't that cool? I don't know why, but I think, wait a minute. Now, you know what? I'm not going to think too hard about what I think I just saw in there. So I'm going to take my little dude there. And what I was going to say is a lot of times those old car guys are like, oh, I don't need a, I don't need a, I don't need one of those. I don't need a funnel. Yuck. I'm a man. I pour it straight in. I, I don't feel the need to do that. <laughs> Mainly because oil is expensive and I don't want to get it all over my mom's floors. So you, you do whatever you want to do. This is what I'm going to do. So, all right. So. I'm gonna fill this sucker up with oil. I'm also gonna make sure I don't kick anything any important. I also, I switched out the funnel I was gonna use. Um, just, I wanted the bigger filter. So here's another thing. Don't overfill. Look up your specs. And be very, very careful. And I'll explain more about that here in just a second. I don't think I've ever heard that before, actually. Did I tighten everything? Yeah, I did. Sometimes I scare myself a little bit. I'm gonna let that finish pouring. Okay, there we go. And some people like to buy the individual quarts. Um, I do that sometimes, but I really do prefer to just get this five quart. Just makes things a whole lot easier. Uh, my car takes five quarts. Um, thing is, is that they usually have a little bit of oil left, and like I said, you really don't want to be um, overfilling. Um, that can be just as bad as having not enough. But I usually try and give it, because mine takes five, for example. I usually try and put in almost all of it. Not quite all of it, but almost all of it. You can hear there's just a little bit left. So I'm gonna put the cap back on. Probably should have checked it beforehand to make sure I'm not leaking it too terribly bad, but I didn't. So, there's always next time. So, what do you say we put that cap back on and start her up and see what happens? I'm not being 100% serious there. I know what's gonna happen. It's gonna run, it's gonna run well, and I'm not gonna worry. I mean, I am gonna worry. I always worry about this, but, we're gonna do it. All right. All right. Before before I go about starting her back up, I'm gonna lower her back down. Holy cow, it is dusty. I'm gonna go ahead and lower her back down. I'm gonna show you exactly where I put it. Maybe. There you go. So that right there is my K member. I kind of put it right on the back edge so it lines up with my jack. Let's double check this. Yeah, woo! Nice and tight. Nice and tight. All right, I'm gonna have to let you go though, cause I'm weak. All right, back on the ground. Um, I do think I'm gonna do a tutorial later on really going in more in depth on how to lift your car. Um, I might not. I might. I keep forgetting that I need to raise this camera so you're not looking up my nose. So, double check. Everything's rocking and ready to go. Start her up. First, gotta find my keys. I swear I don't lose things this often. Are they in my trunk? I hope they're not in my trunk. I don't think my car's locked. 
Oh, they're over here. Though. I'm a box. Oh, my little, my little two box. That's another thing I find funny is people are always really like loyal to one certain kind of tools. Like they only use snap on. They only use cobalt. They only use Matco. Whatever. And I'm like, they're tools. I like snap on. I like cobalt. I like Dewalt. I like Milwaukee. Whatever. I actually like using all kinds of tools. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're gonna start this car up. Make sure my oil change is good, and I'll keep talking while it's running. All right, Let's see if I can hit the hole. All right. So, now, it may sound, that it may sound like it's idling pretty low, but I'm gonna check underneath. Make sure there's no drippy drippy. All right. So it's kind of loud in there. So we're going to move on to the next step. I started my car. What should we do? Should we go for a drive? No, no, wrong, no. We're going to let it run for a while. And the reason is because Engines don't just shoot oil straight into the, all their oil passages right away. So, we want to let that new fresh oil, that mm, golden oil, got dirt on my phone, that new fresh oil, let it work itself in, let it run through the filter, just let it get into the engine nice and good. We're going to let it run for a few minutes, and we're going to take it for a drive. I might bring you guys with me, I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to let the oil fill in. Let the filter get filled up. Some people prime their filters. Which is where you put oil in your filter before you screw it in, which I've never done. It doesn't really make much sense to me because usually filters will have a bypass valve, which is just a fancy way of saying that it won't shoot oil through your filter until the engine's ready for it. Um, it keeps your engine from not running with oil for a few seconds because uh, that'd be bad. So anyway, that's my, that's my personal take on pre-filling or priming your filter. But... That's beside the point. We're gonna let the old Mustang get warmed up. I'm gonna let it work the oil in. Um, sounds like it's idling pretty normally right now, but we're gonna let it sit for a few more minutes. Um, can drive a little bit, make sure everything's good. And then I'll send you guys on your way. All right, we're gonna let her sit there for a little longer, but I'm gonna get the garage cleaned up. I'll let you guys watch um, just cause I'm bored. So, all right, I think it's time for a test drive. So let's do it. All right, I'm not gonna drive too long because I really don't want to get in trouble for driving with a cellular device because I don't have a phone stand for my car yet. Or maybe I won't ever, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna put my windows up so you guys can hear me a little better. Probably gonna die of heat stroke. Check. Right, left. Right, or is it left, right, left? I never remember. All right, so car sounds like it's running pretty good. I mean, aside from my massive exhaust leak, but that's a fix for another day. That's probably gonna be a big old video. Um, oh, there's a car, my car. I probably should have covered up the license plate, but eh. If you guys know where I live, and you know, I'm not gonna be too, distraught actually I will but um, there's a car coming up here so I'm gonna put keep them out of frame this time ah, nice try scammers but cars running pretty dang good so you know just enjoy the Midwest countryside with me I mean the the countryside of any of the Wests <laughs> uh, all right guys let's head back home all right, guys, we're back home. We're gonna do one more thing before we call this good. Actually, two more. I'm gonna freeze it. Actually, you won't. You guys won't be able to see it because I don't really feel like turning the camera. But we're good. I don't see any drippy drippies. So now we're just gonna go grab the shop towel. I'm gonna check the oil, make sure levels look good. And since I checked underneath, didn't see any leaks. Usually I can get away with not actually looking too closely, but I'm gonna be double sure. You guys probably can't see diddly, 
Nope, you sure can't. But I'm gonna be double sure, make sure. I'm not gonna show you any more license plates other than my own, because I don't really care. I actually don't know if you guys have seen my license plate. I have it. But, I'm gonna check the oil. That'll be good. All right. Woo, that door needs to be something. Oh, I just about dropped that on my head. Holy cow. I really did. I just about dropped this whole hood right on my poor little head. So, I don't have my stand out here. But I do think I can do that. Ooh, I just swung oil all over the place. So, you're going to wipe it off? Ooh, that oil looks nice. Nice and gold. I'm going to stick it back in there. This is what you got to do to check. Okay, can't just, can't just be, ow, that was hot. Can't just be driving around. My well, stick's reading low. Unless I just vomited out 20 gallons. Well, I'm pretty sure my dipstick's reading off, but you get the gist of it. Check your oil, make sure you got some. Make sure you got some, hold on. Hold on, make sure you got some. Be safe. If you guys try this at home, be safe. Um, if you're not comfortable doing it, don't do it. Have somebody else do it. Don't forget to like, subscribe. You guys have a good rest of your day. See you next time.